if you have certain genetic defects like MCAD or porphyria, MCAD is meeting chain acetylcoenzyme A dehydrogenase deficiency, which means you can't break down fatty acids and you can't fast because you'd start vomiting and then you'd die. So we don't fast people with MCAD because it would definitely mess up our safety data. Uh, if you have deficiency, depletion, or cachexia, fasting may not be for you because if you've already in a depleted state, uh, you know, we'd have to build you up first before you'd be able to undergo uh, certainly long-term fasting. If you can't discontinue medications, then you may have to do modified fasting because you do not want to fast on medication with the rare exceptions of some true replacement therapies like thyroid therapy. Uh, if you can't rest, you shouldn't fast. If you're too active, you'll lose more weight, but it won't be fat. It'll be muscle. And so we don't want to be breaking down your lean tissue. We want to preferentially burn fat. And that means uh, when you're fasting, you're resting. Conditions that are favorable uh, to fasting are obviously the conditions associated with dietary excess. Obesity and visceral fat, elevated blood lipids, elevated blood pressure, cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, conditions like lymphoma, which is a type of lymph cancer, uh, gastrointestinal imbalances, microbiome disturbances, autoimmune disorders where the body's actually attacking itself, like, you know, rheumatoid arthritis, ulcerative colitis, ankylosing spondylitis, lupus, asthma, eczema, psoriasis, these conditions are all associated with problems of gut leakage. And during fasting, the gut has a chance to heal, then going on a low oxidative damage type diet. So low risk of oxidative damage prevents these conditions from activating. So you don't cure those conditions, but you manage them. The truth is you don't cure any conditions, including obesity. You can lose the weight, you can keep it off. But if you go back to eating the greasy, fatty, slimy processed food that got it there, it's coming back. So you can manage it. You don't cure it. Uh, dependence, toxicity, fatigue, and pain are all responsive to fasting. In fact, some dependence issues are fasting. Most smokers, by the end of the second day, will not report any physical cravings. Now, sometimes they say, yeah, they're so miserable with the fasting, they don't think about the cigarettes. But the fact is, the metabolic processes are just sped up, so it makes it a lot easier to get off those addictions and break those bad habits. Fasting duration ranges from two to 40 days. Average fasting length is one to three weeks. Some patients do require multiple fasts. We don't yet have reliable non-invasive diagnostic markers that tell us who should fast and how long, but we're working on it. That's part of the work that the True North Health Foundation is doing. Our 501c3 nonprofit research facility is trying to discover how to do this uh, better, how to do it safer, and how to identify people who are the best candidates for this type of intervention. So I mentioned lymphoma. Fasting appears to be an effective tool in the management of lymphoma. Our first published case was in the British Medical Journal Case Reports. This was published in 2015. Uh, this case involved a 42-year-old woman with stage 3A grade 1 follicular lymphoma. <clears throat> it had been established by <clears throat> excuse me, excisional biopsy. She'd been tracked for two years. The continue, condition continued to progress until eventually she was told that her only choice was to go through chemotherapy. But instead of doing that, she came to True North Health, underwent 21 days of water-only fasting, during which time her tumors disappeared and became non-palpable. Um, after 10 days of refeeding, uh, she was sent back for uh, a follow-up evaluation with her oncologist. Uh, she continued to track with her oncologist. <clears throat> And after a year, uh, we managed to publish a paper uh, that did appear uh, in BMJ. And then three years later, we tracked this patient uh, and she continued to uh, uh, eat a whole plant food SOS free diet. And we were able to demonstrate uh, that she was cancer free and uh, then published that paper in uh, British Medical Journal as a follow-up. And three years, she was, uh, C CT PET scans demonstrated uh, that she was completely cancer-free. Now, this patient reported that she had maintained her yearly follow-up with her oncology appointments. She included her serology and uh, computed tomography uh, and confirmed that she continued her remission. And she also confirmed that she continued to follow the diet. 
Now I explained to this patient that she had to stick to the whole plant food diet or it could be fatal because I would track her down and kill her. And apparently she believed me because we just got her 10 year follow-up and she continues to be free of cancer. Now, since then, we've managed to put together a, a number of patients that we've been tracking with lymphoma. Uh, this case involved a 49-year-old male who had previously achieved remission with radiation therapy, but then had, as often happens, uh, recurrence. It was diagnosed uh, grade three follicular lymphoma of the head and neck. <clears throat> he had surveillance C uh, CT PET scans and identified several hypermetabolic mesenteric nodes. And so he underwent 21 days of fasting, during which time he experienced significant improvement as demonstrated three months later on a CT PET scan. Uh, there was no evidence of hypermetabolic malignancy or new disease. We followed him uh, and uh, continues to do well. Another case, this gentleman, 56-year-old male, stage three, grade two follicular lymphoma, um, underwent 21 days of fasting and demonstrated some initial improvement. And so then we brought him back uh, uh, and when we brought him back, we underwent 39 days of water only fasting. This was 10 months after the initial 21 day fast. And we were able to demonstrate additional improvements. Uh, five months after the second fast, um, revealed that the mesenteric lymph nodes had reduced in size, the inguinal lymph nodes were undetectable, and it also revealed uh, a new finding of multifocal uh, osseous intake in the left iliac crest, which was of some concern. But we brought him back for uh, another fast, uh, 14 months later after the second fast, and the CT revealed a mesenteric finding as well as decreased ossea uptake, so e even that previously new problem was resolving. So we have the initial scan two months after the initial fast, five months after the second fast, and then 14 months after the second fast. Uh, and this series of um, cases that we're tracking has been put together in a case series. It's been uh, accepted for publication in a peer-reviewed journal. It'll be coming out uh, in, in the coming weeks. And for those of you that are interested, we have a, the foundation has a site, fasting.org, where all of our uh, research is published, it's freely available. You can go in and take a look at all these and other studies that I won't have time to overview today. This was a case of uh, seborrheic keratosis. Uh, these were lesions that showed up on a woman's face. And um, you can see uh, here's an example of one of these facial lesions. Uh, a lot of people don't like having lesions like this on their face. Um, in this particular case, the patient uh, did some preparatory feeding, and then we did 11 days of water-only fasting and then some recovery time. And, and then during the time uh, we were refeeding, the lesions started to disintegrate. And uh, you can see the before and after. Uh, and this wasn't with, we didn't do any procedures. This was just the body's immune system activating and resolving this non-cancerous lesion. 